Good morning. How's everyone doing today? It is currently October the 7th, 7.36 a.m. Central Time, and we are waking up to now major Category 3 Hurricane Milton, which is just dominating its environment right now. This There is absolutely nothing stopping this thing, and there's going to be absolutely nothing stopping this thing for quite some time as it starts pushing towards the Yucatan Peninsula, um, the northern part of the Yucatan. And this thing's actually going to get pretty close now to the Yucatan. And I'm going to say people in the Yucatan really need to watch this. Um, um, uh, some models trends are now taking the eye scraping the side of the northern Yucatan, which um, regardless, even if the eye barely comes over y'all, y'all are definitely going to see impacts of this storm. And some of the latest model guidance, a lot more than yesterday, are definitely taking this to a Category 5 hurricane now by the time it pushes to the north of Yucatan. So that's something that we're going to have to look at. But let's go ahead and go over some of the data, the latest aircraft data and the latest satellite imagery to really break down and see what's going on with Hurricane Milton. Alrighty, jumping over to the latest aircraft recon data. Um, they did a fly through earlier this morning and last night as well. And they are definitely picking up on some 10 second wind peaks of over 130 miles an hour and pressure readings down to a 949 on that southeastern side of that eye wall. This is pretty much right on the brink of a category four hurricane at this point, And I won't be surprised um, when y'all are watching this video after I upload it, that this thing could already be a category four hurricane. Um, it is very, very close. I have no doubt in my mind this thing can definitely top out to a Category 5 um, winds for a Cat 5. Only got to be 157 miles an hour, and by the time later today, it's really going to be just shy of that. So um, that's something that we're going to have to look at. Pressure continues to fall with this thing, and I'm, just, I'm telling y'all guys, this thing is absolutely a beast. It is dominating its environment. There's absolutely nothing for stopping it, but y'all can see they're about to make another pass here. So we'll go ahead and um, see what happens there with that pass as well. Diving into some of the models now, these are one of the models that we looked at yesterday, the HAFSA model, which, like I said, did a pretty good job when it came to forecasting Helene, and this thing just absolutely shows a ripper coming just north of the Yucatan Peninsula by um, tomorrow. We've down to a 933, um, 934, 931, 929. 916, 912, 910 gets all the way down to a 910. And this is the latest update. I think the 0Z actually showed like something crazy, like a not, like an 890 or something like that, which is absolutely insane. That's beyond um, way into Cat 5 territory at that point. But um, the good news is we are still seeing the model's trends as far as the weakening goes um, as it approaches land because there's still going to be that opportunity for a lot um, of. Uh, westernly shear and dry air to get into the backside of the storm and it continues to do that and it continues to show that on these bottle runs which is very very good um this one does show this latest 6z model run shows it holding its strength actually a little bit more and coming directly into tampa bay as a 947 okay this would be very high in category three pretty much almost category four status at this point coming right straight up in the Tampa Bay. This would be most likely the worst case scenario if we see a worst case scenario at this point. Um, like I said, storm surge completely inundating into the Tampa Bay area. And speaking of storm surge, we've actually got some of this official storm surge outlook data from the National Hurricane Center. Um, but we'll go ahead and jump over there and check that out in a second. But like I said, this is just one model run. If we go back to the 0Z model run, you can see here, um, a little bit different, right? It's got to go just a tad bit more than a 957, making landfall maybe as a 960 something, right? So definitely a little bit difference in the model, but look at this. I mean, it takes it down to all the way down to 986. I mean, absolutely crazy. And if we go ahead, let's go ahead and jump back here and take it back in time when it's just getting over the Yucatan Peninsula at its peak, right? Let's go ahead and take a sample of here. And we're looking at wind shear, about 15 knots, 15 knots of wind shear. Let's go ahead and throw this into motion back towards landfall here, right? Down to a 933. Let's go ahead and take another sample here, right? Wind shear is up to 42 knots. So that wind shear is still showing. It's definitely increasing. Um, I think that what's happening now with some of these models is that they're starting to realize that, hey, like this storm, it... it it's getting a lot stronger than what we initially thought, right? And it's getting such a tight core that it might not have much time to really weaken down before it hits land. It's going to weaken, but the difference between a Category 5 and a high-end Cat 3 
mid-grade Cat 4 is not going to be much of a difference. The Storm Surge is going to be just as bad as a Category 5. Like, if this happens and it comes in as a high-end Cat 3 or whatever, it, it's going to be just as bad as a Cat 5. So that's also something we got to take into consideration as well. All right, and here's another model. This is the HMON model. This is the one we looked at yesterday. Um, this has it going. The, the HMON model has actually always had this trending a little bit further north, which is interesting because I'll show you the official track update from the National Hurricane Center as of 7 a.m. this morning. But this one's always been a little bit more north track related, and I think this might be a little bit of an outlier, but it gets all the way down to a 9.21, and then it starts weakening, comes in north of Tampa, almost in the Big Bend area as a 9.60, 9.55, right? Still catastrophic, still going to be plenty of storm surge coming into Tampa Bay. So we'll definitely have to see how these two models continue to handle the storm. But I think the HAFS model definitely has a better handle on this as far as the tra trajectory goes. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and jump over to the official National Hurricane Center forecast cone. As y'all can see here, um, the Yucatan Peninsula, the northern part, has been issued under a hurricane warning now and tropical storm warnings on the outer side as the um, cone of trajectory has trended a little bit further south. So like I said, a potential scrape of the inner eye wall is possible. So we're definitely going to have to continue to monitor that, especially for the people in the Yucatan, because this would be significant. By the time it's sitting here, you're on, I mean... Phew, I mean, we're looking at max sustained winds of over 155 miles an hour, most likely gusting up to 160 to 170 by the time we get to 1 p.m. Tuesday. So this thing is going to be absolutely ripping. We finally have hurricane watches out for pretty much the whole entire western part of Gulf of Florida, all the way down from almost Perry, all the way down to Fort Myers, Cape Coral, and then tropical storm warnings all the way from the Florida Keys to pretty much Tallahassee. So that's kind of a look at the cone. It's going to continue to change. It's going to continue to move up and down. But um, unfortunately, this is looking, this is not looking good, guys. This is looking worst case scenario as far as the trajectory of it. We don't want to see this thing come into Tampa Bay whatsoever. We don't want to see this thing come really anywhere in Florida. But worst case scenario would be if this thing comes right up through the Tampa Bay. I mean, the surge is going to be absolutely devastating. And speaking of surge, we do have peak storm surge forecasts. Which these are going to change. These numbers are going to change. They're going to be tweaked a little bit. But y'all can see um, pretty much the whole big bend of Florida, about 1 to 3 feet, come a little bit further down, 3 to 5 feet. And then pretty much all the way from the bottom of the big bend down to um, Charlotte Harbor, um, looking at 5 to 10 feet, um, Inglewood, 5 to 10 feet, 8 to 10, 8 to 12 feet. For the Tampa Bay area, okay. These numbers are just based on the track as of right now and the strength of right now. But I think these will definitely rise as we get a better handle on the storm system as well. All right, and here's a look at the relatively uh, the re relative humidity. I cannot speak this morning of um, the latest um, GFS 6Z model, and y'all can kind of see right there. Here's a storm down here. We're down to a 957, 959, 953, 952. And watch down here. All this brown is dry air. So hurricanes don't do good with dry air. Um, they need moist air. They need to be able to breathe. This stuff chokes them off, absolutely kills them. And as we put this in motion, 947, right? And at this last frame, right before landfall, it starts getting choked off. So this might be a saving grace. It tries to kill the storm very quickly right at landfall. The question is, how strong is it going to be by the time that dryer gets to it? Is it going to be able to really make much of a difference? Is it going to be able to, be able to get really wrapped in that core? That's that's the big question at this point, right? Like we're starting to hone, get honed in on the directory of where it's possibly going to make landfall. We're getting a little bit better idea. But as far as the intensity upon landfall, there is still a lot of uncertainty. And I really don't think we're going to get just a, a good handle on it until we get down to that last 24 to 48 hours before landfall so we're really gonna have to wait until it gets around this area right right around this area until we get a better idea of what's going to happen the other thing we can look at is the shear there's going to be lots of westerly flow like i said we talked about this we pulled some soundings out a lot more shear as it gets closer to the co western coast of florida and you can see the gfs 958 959 960 954 953 948 and then boom, 965, it starts getting all that westerly from the backside. It can breathe fine. It's got plenty of room to breathe from the, the northern side, the eastern side, the southern eastern side. But when you're having all that westerly slam into the back of the storm, it's going to disorient it. It's going to displace that center a little bit. It's really going to start weakening it. And I do think no matter what, this thing is most likely going to stay a category one across the whole entire state of Florida. I don't think it will get under cap one status, really. 
I mean, the whole entire state of Florida, where this thing is going to go over within probably 50 miles one way, 50 miles another way, if not more, is going to experience hurricane force winds because this thing's going to broaden out. And if you kind of go back, look on these models, right? It's a very small storm, right? See, so look how compact it is. Just um, north of the Yucatan, very small, very small. And as it starts weakening, look how it just boom fans out gets really big all whole bunch of convection on the northern side and i think it's going to kind of be interesting to see what happens with a lot of the convection and a lot of the precipitation because i think it might get displaced a lot more northern than the southern side it's usually the eastern and southern side is the dirty side but depending on how this shear and westerly flow messes with the storm and displaces it it could be quite interesting and some of the impacts could be quite different based on what the models are forecasting right now so that's something that we're going to have to watch um just want to show y'all real quick before we hop off here. Let's see if we got some daylight here. Um, our live satellite imagery, and look at that. Absolutely monster. I know you can't really see it until the last frame. There's a the center right there. And, I mean, just look at it all bubbling up. This thing is ripping. Um, wow. That is, that's all I can say, this thing. And, I mean, if I'm... It, I don't know if any if there's population on this island I haven't necessarily checked or if this is just, just an, a random island, but, oh, man... If I was sitting on this island and watching this thing stare down on me, I'd be frightened at this point. I mean, this is this is insane. This is impressive. It's definitely an impressive storm. And if this thing tops out at a Cat 5 north of Yucatan, this is going to make for some very, very impressive satellite imagery. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see. So that is going to conclude it for today's video, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll continue to put more updates. Probably won't be able to put another update out until tomorrow morning around this time. Um, busy, working, so... Um, definitely try to keep you up to date as much as possible. Stay safe, stay weather aware, and I'll see y'all in the next video.